So hi, uh, uh, I am. I think it's it's working. Cool. So I'm going to just explore uh, recoil uh, today. Uh, it was introduced, uh, I think, yesterday or day before yesterday at React Europe, and uh, I'm pretty excited. Like what problems it solves, and surprisingly, it solves a very similar problem which I spoke at React Europe too. Uh, but my approach with BuilderX was more or less of uh, object oriented and imperative programming whereas this one uh, recoil is is more or less the functional or reactive way that's what they say works and things like react so uh, the, this talk was uh, really nice i think it was by dave uh, he's not very active on twitter but uh, he talks about the problem yeah it's why it, it's why david okay okay cool so uh, he talks about the problems uh, what uh, state management libraries like Redux have and uh, how Redux uses a single store and dispatches to all the mounted components, which slows down uh, high performant applications like say a design tool or something like a drag and drop operation. So let's have a look at this and try to do something here and explore what happens. Okay, so get started. So let me create a React app first. Okay, so I'm gonna create a React app. Let's put this side by side, maybe. All right. Cool. Uh, so let me go to the projects folder and then name it, say, recoil test. Great. So it says that React. The recoil is a state management library for React, so you need to have React installed, and the easiest way and recommended way to, is using Create React app. That's pretty straightforward. And then we're going to add recoil and see what this one does. So, so they have something called as recoil root com components that use recoil state need recoil root to appear somewhere in the parent tree. Okay, pretty much like uh the the parent like uh, provide a component and then we have atom atom represents a piece of state atoms can be read from and written to from any component okay components that read the value of an atom are implicitly subscribed to that atom okay so this is more like observable of uh, say mobex so whatever change you make to an atom and uh, whichever component is actually making that change it's or reading from that particular atom it's going to be read all right so we have the create react app so i'm going to just go into recoil test and uh, i'll just add recoil and see what happens okay so this package is installed and uh, let's uh, fire up vs code So I'm going to go to my app.js and uh, remove all these things and first test it out how this is working. Recoil, recoil, okay. I'm going to get rid of logo as well and uh, yeah, let's run this app and start. Cool. And uh, cool. All right, so we have the React app running here, and uh, we need to see the documentation again, and then put VS Code on this side so that we keep making changes. Okay, so uh, it says that we need to add this, so let's add, say, everything to our app.js. All right, so I'm gonna remove this, and uh, yeah, so let's see how that works. So recoil root that is imported from here and then character counter. And uh, yeah, so let's try to use this character counter and uh, have text input over here. And then let's have a selector as well, text selector. This is gonna paste everything here so that it starts working and then we, we're gonna 
like see one by one what what actually is happening here okay cool so i just collapse this and then text state is something it's not reading where is text state i think text state i have defined it already somewhere here i have not i'm gonna copy this okay and paste it here all right cool and uh, the app is no more exported by default so i'm gonna export this by default so for default app and see if everything works fine cool so we've got this okay cool so this example says that there are two different components so let me just zoom in a bit so that it's visible to everyone cool so uh, this one states that i mean these this these two are two different components one is uh the input box say this is say i can type this on case here and then echo is another component which has the shared state of this input box and then there's this third component called character count which uh counts the characters of this particular string so three different things but they are working on the same state that is text state okay so text state can be created as an atom and we have a key for this so since this is functional and uh, everything can be transferred over the wire uh, we have to give it a key and we're not working with references unlike mobux or object oriented programming and then we have a component called uh, character count which okay this is the parent uh, parent component and then text input so text input uh, is this input and then it uses use instead of use state it's using re use recoil state and in recoil state we pass in the atom what we have created okay pretty cool and everything looks very familiar to any other react app so this is pretty standard stuff and then we have another selector another selector okay so this is like something similar to atom but this is a selector of the atom so to get some derived data we can actually do this so selector and uh, this is a new key cal count state and then uh, we are getting the value from somewhere and uh, this gets okay so this gets the state from another atom okay and then this gives us the length so this is like the derived state all right let me just put it near next to the atom so that it's clear okay cool so we have a text state and then we have derived a state called cal count state which depends on text state so here it's it's taking that text state all right and then uh say we have character count so here we are instead of using recall state we are using a recall value and uh, as soon as we do it it uh, gets the count here and uh, we can actually change things cool pretty straightforward and very easy to use uh, i'm going to compare it with few other libraries later but let's let's dig into this a bit more so atom and selector uh, let's let's try to create something let, let me move all these to say some other file so I'm gonna move this to another file, say move to a new file, and let's call it. Uh, it has already named it, so I'm gonna rename this file to say logged in user or auth user, something like that. So rename. Oops. So I'm gonna just rename this file and then say uh, say logged in user. I want to st store the logged in user and then use it across my app my application across components. I'm gonna comment out uh, this particular thing and then say I have atom and uh, selector. I don't need it for now. So I'm gonna remove this and then say uh, logged in user. That's an atom and then say this has the key of logged in user and it defaults to say uh, name is equal to say some case and then uh, avatar can be something say okay. Let let's just have name okay and uh, so logged in user is this and then i'm going to use say uh, I'll, I'll create say a header component where people we usually show the name of the logged in user and then somewhere uh, in the body of my application i'm going to use it again so okay so i have got an app it's for default i've got an app component and then i've got a header so in the header i want to use the logged in user state okay so here i create header and then say here i want to say uh, you are and then give it a name so 
I'll just say, uh, say Sanket for now. I'll connect it later. And then function in the body, I want to use, say, I want to show, say, somewhere in the in the page, say, under comments or something. So here again, I'm, I'm, I want to show that this is a comment by Sanket, and he says, say, something, right? All right. So if I do this and refresh it, so it's showing me static values. So, uh, okay, it's, it's a diff. So I'm gonna just move this a bit and then I'm going to do this and it's strong. And uh, yeah, so yeah, so so this is, okay, this is in my header component and then it's somewhere else. So if I want to use this from say a state, so what I can do is I can say const, say uh, user and then set user, set user is equal to say use use state, sorry, use state. And then inside this, I'm gonna have say name as say Sanket, right? And here I'm gonna say user dot name, correct? And I, I need to import use state from somewhere, cool. So as soon as I do this, uh, I can see that, okay, now this is this particular thing is coming from uh, lo a local state. Just to make it a little clearer, I'll just give it some water, maybe. Water and say one of solid black. Okay, and uh, then I have uh, another component. So, so let's just uh, copy this one here. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, so this is another component. And let's give it some margin so that we know, okay, these two are two different components. All right, so, so this is the header component and I can just write it here. So header, and then I'll write, say, body. So that it's a bit clear, body. All right, so in the header we have this, okay. Now this user dot name is coming from a local state here, right? And I want to use it in body. So if I do this, if I copy this particular state, say in body again, so it creates like two different variables. So here it's Sanket and here it can be say ABC, right? And sorry, I need to wire that up. So here it can be say user dot name. So if I do that, we have two different uh, variables uh, or, or two different states. And these are local state, like one for body, one for header. But I want to share this between these two components. So recoil provides a way so that you can actually share these two things between uh, two different components. So share local state uh, across two components. That's what it does. So let's see. So I'm going to use this, uh, say, logged in user atom instead of that. So use, say, recoil state, recoil state. And instead of this, I'm going to pass in the logged in user atom here and do the same thing from here. Uh, so you instead of use state, re use recall state and pass in the same atom. And I can just import this. So uh, logged in user. Okay. And uh, yeah, so logged in user is an atom and we are using it through this. So now what happens is this state user, which was local to header and local to body, like they were two different uh, states. Now it's being shared. So if I change it from here, so say if I change it with a button in the header. So let's add a button, say on click is equal to, and I can say set user, uh, I'm gonna give it a name, say uh, other. And uh, set other user. Okay, let's save it. And uh, yeah, so if I click on this, it's no more a local state, it's a state which is shared between these two. So it should ideally update the state of this and this both. So let's see. Yes, it does that. So here we have, so it's, it's pretty straightforward, very similar to local state, but if you want to take your local state to a global state or share the local state with something else, 
you can use recoil uh, what it does under the hood i think uh, that's very much very well explained in the talk so i think this is a really nice technique to share things between two different components and and it's it's going to replace uh or bring back a lot of things like services uh, and dependency injection of object oriented here so you can use this say logged in user can be treated as a say service uh, which can do a lot of things now so pretty exciting to see these things uh, coming in react and uh, not only uh, just like i mean not only it provides a very nice api it's also very optimized so that it doesn't read into anything in between the tree or its siblings or its uh, parent components it just read and does whichever component is actually using that particular uh, atom so yeah yeah that's a very uh, high level and uh, overview and a quick demo uh, i think i'm going to dive into uh, a bit detail later but yeah if you guys have comments or something i don't see any comments uh, but looks like 84 people were watching this so i think yeah that's all for now thank you so much we'll uh, talk again later bye